What about now? Yeah, it's good. Uh, hey, my name is uh, Amarjot Singh, and uh, I'm a licensed immigration consultant based in Edmonton, Alberta, and I have somebody from Mexico today. Uh, I'm talking to Alberto uh, Cannibal. I, 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 I don't know how to pronounce the name. Uh, Pulido. Alberto Pulido Campbell. And uh, I, I also have an interpreter translator, Al, uh, also in Edmonton. And he will help me translate whatever I cannot understand, and then we will go from there. We're trying to find out uh, uh, what are the questions that people from Mexico have if they are planning to go to Canada, and uh, hopefully shed some light and clarify some confusing concepts and you know questions. So, uh, Elvoto, uh, welcome to the show, and uh, uh, feel free to start your questions. Go ahead, uh, Alex. Alberto, bienvenido a, a, al show. Uh, tú puedes empezar a hacer preguntas. Eh, estas preguntas van a ser para cualquier persona que esté interesado en venir a Canadá. Ok. Este, bueno, pues yo, eh, yo soy médico general aquí en México. Yo tenía duda este, porque estuve viendo el, el sitio para, para revalidar pero hasta donde yo entendí, si es que no entendí mal, para poder revalidar medicina necesitas ser residente permanente, o eso es lo que yo entendí. Ok, he said that uh, he, he would like to uh, come to Canada, and he was checking on, the, on Canada's uh, site, uh, and then he said that he would like to va validate his studies. He is general practitioner, in Mexico uh, as a doctor. Yes, so uh, so if you are looking to come as a PR applicant with family, so you have to go to federal uh, skilled worker express entry category. Express entry is the category for skilled professionals like him to validate his degree and his qualifications. So he has to do uh, what is called a ECA, Educational Credential Assessment. And for doctors, it is uh, a little separate uh, body which uh, which does that. So go ahead and explain, and I'll tell you which one does the medical. Go ahead and explain, translate okay. this. One. Okay, dice que si quieres venir como doctor, tendrías que eh, ir al eh, sitio de Express Entry, eh, perdón, al de Skill Worker, aplicar como Skill Worker. Ah, una vez que vengas como Skill Worker, ahí adentro de, de Skill Worker hay algo que se llama Express Entry. Si sí, hay una forma de validar los estudios, eh, es un poquito eh, eh, laborioso, pero sí es posible. Ok, go ahead. Uh, so, uh, the, the medical degrees from overseas are, are uh, assessed by, can you see on the screen, by the way, it's called Medical Council of Canada. Do you see that on the screen? Puedes ver en la, en la pantalla. Eh, eh, ahí, ahí hay un, es un sitio que dice para eh, medical. Do you, do, you, do you see the screen? Can you see on your screen uh, what I'm showing here? La pantalla. Sí. Sí. Sí, se sí. Yeah. Sí. So this is called Medical Council of Canada. Uh, you can go to the website here. I'll put this link down below if you want. Eso and para, you, can do a, you can do an educational credential assessment. So that will, uh, it yeah. gives you, it gives you everything. Uh, it's on the website. Uh, it's very, yeah, yeah que se llama este, asesoría, ah, no, eh, evaluación para, este, para me, consejero médico y ahí puedes ver lo que te haga falta. Ok. okay. Yeah. So this is, this is uh, clearly written on the website is if you are an international medical graduate, uh, then you can have your medical degree or diploma verified by the Medical Council of Canada. Once it is verified, they will give you a letter showing uh, what is the equal level uh, so that you can, you know, claim some points on extra century profile? Let me, let me tell you. Uh, dice que esto es una... Ahí, ahí en donde te está enseñando, es, ahí <laughs> está claramente dicho qué es lo que necesitas para este, venir eh, a, de esa forma. Dice Amerjot que eh, puedes venir como... Eh, eh, you said that he can come as a medical counselor, you said? 
No, no, no. Here's here's the thing. Uh, once uh, once you apply, you have to make a profile uh, on on the on the IRCC website for express entry. Express entry is a way by which the government of Canada will take your profile and it will give you points based on your age, based on your education, based on your experience, your English language skills or French language skills and so forth. So one of them is also your education. Now, since he has a medical degree from Mexico, so that medical degree has to be assessed as whether it's equal to the Canada degree or not, or to what level. And based on that, he will claim points so that he can get a grand total of points in express entry. Sí, mira, le, eh, me dice que eh, tienes que ver el, el sitio que nos mostró y en ese sitio hacer una evaluación. En esa evaluación, eh, si tú tienes un certificado, un diploma de México, un título de, de México, ahí puedes ir contestando. Y basado en, en la edad que tienes, basado en, en el estado de este, casado, basado en este en tu educación y en qué tanto manejas el inglés, ahí te va a dar un puntaje. Mm, yeah. I'm, I'm showing on the screen, and um, this is also, everything is on the Government of Canada website, and he can do a Google uh, for Express Entry, and then he can come to this screen. I'm showing on the screen uh, what is Federal Skill Worker uh, under Express Entry, and it tells you uh, what, what do we need? What are the selection factors? The points are on the base of age, education experience, how long of experience does he have? Does he have a job offer? What is his language skills? And of course, his settlement points, you know, based on certain things that he has. Uh, so this is this is how he will get points. So minimum, you know, uh, it, took, it gives you very clearly what the minimum requirements are. But let me ask you some simple questions. Uh, how old is he? What is his age? Hold, hold on a minute. Mira, dice que en este sitio, en Federal Skill Worker, Puedes contestar todas esas cosas, ves, que, eh, eh, que mencionó eh, acerca de tu edad, acerca de qué estudiaste, acerca de este, eh, los certificados que tienes. Pero él te va a preguntar unas este, preguntas específicas. Pregunta por sí. tu edad. ¿Qué edad tienes? 29 años. 29 years old. Yeah, so he's 29 years and he has a degree, uh, medical degree. And how much experience does he have after the medical degree? Dice que tienes este, el, el, este, el diploma, de, el título de, de médico. ¿Cuántos años de experiencia sí. tienes trabajando como médico? Este, desde el 2019. Sí, es todo en 19. So it's four years. So he has four years. That's wonderful. So he has three, three years plus experience. His age is less than 30. And he has a medical degree, which of course, uh, I'm hoping that it will be equal to The, the final uh, medical uh, licensure degree and uh, is that the like a uh, like a bachelor's degree or a, like a postgraduate degree in masters or bachelor's or at what level is that let me ask you que si tienes título de como como master o tienes un este alguna especialidad arriba del master perdón antes que eso dice que está este maravilloso que que tú tengas menos de 30 años y que ya tengas este, más de tres años de experiencia. Con eso eh, eh, lo estás haciendo. ¿Ok? Ahora, eh, ¿tienes algún... Eh, a, ¿A qué equivale tu eh, eh, degree, eh, tu título en, en, en inglés? ¿Tú sabes? Bueno, es que yo sé, bueno, hasta donde yo sé, bachelor en México es como carrera técnica. Y, y pues mi tiempo? título... Yeah. Bachelor is like a technical degree, but he has over technical degree. Mm -hmm. he, sí, but, sí. Good. Hopefully, I think, hopefully it is a final degree to practice medicine. So that's wonderful. And uh, uh, so we are missing now uh, his uh, language skills. So he has to take a language test in English or French, whatever he's comfortable with. So uh, on, on the language, uh, on the language uh, test, uh, we are hoping that he will have Uh, close to CLB 8 or 9, if possible, higher the better. So, uh, whatever he can take. So, you can, uh, you can ask him, can he take English or French, whichever one. Dice, dice que puedes tomar un, un este, ¿cómo se llama? Un eh, examen para saber el nivel de tu inglés. Pero que este, si tienes 8 o más, que es muy bueno, mejor si tienes 9. 
este, que se puede considerar tu título, que es el mismo nivel como el de, el de acá, que es ya con una especialidad, o sea que sería medicina familiar, ¿verdad? Ok, oye, la Ajá, ok. So, can you, can you take uh, English or French? Which, which one will you take? ¿Cuál, cuál, ¿Cuál es mejor, inglés o francés, uh, examen para ti? Inglés. Pero okay. bueno, es que sería como un B1. He, he is better with English. Okay, I will, I will show you on the screen. Tell me if you can see my screen and then I will uh, show you his uh, actual points, uh, tentative points based on certain information. Uh, yeah. So... Let me, let me know. Can you see my screen? Yeah, I can. You can, you can see my screen? Sí, sí, sí. Sí, sí, All right. So, so this is this is called a comprehensive ranking. This is a ranking system of uh, making a tally on who's, who's high and top and where in the express entry uh, point system. So based on the points, then we, we have a good idea how soon or whether whether or not, whether he will be even called uh, for uh, eligibility to be, you know, going forward for the express entry. So I'm going to ask certain questions here and then you can give me the answer. What is your marital status? Married or single? Eh, married. Eh, dice que está, si estás casado o soltero. Casado. casado. Yeah, married. Okay. And uh, his wife is let, also not let, in Canada. Let, let me just tell him what, what, what you said before. Just, just for the purpose of the video. Uh, también me dice, eh, me, me comenta que basado en la experiencia que tengas y los puntos que alcances a través de las preguntas que, eh, que allí te hacen, eh, eso te va a dar una mejor idea de qué tan, eh, eh, de qué tan bueno es, eh, eh, aspira, qué, qué tan buen aspirante te hace para tomar el Express Entry. Ok, okay. ahora sí, casado, ok. Keep, keep keep following the keep following the questions on the screen, and uh, I have listed that his wife will also accompany him to come. Right? This is a joint application for immigration to Canada, correct? Es, yeah, yeah. Dice okay. que puede eh, que si puedes ver lo que eh, lo que está en su pantalla, entonces este ya él te va a ya eso te da una mejor idea y y, y que si las puedes contestar. You know what? I, I hardly see my, my iPhone is not that huge, but even if it's huge, it's hard to hard to read it. Can you yeah. read it? I, I'm on the so, I'm on my I'm on my computer actually because you have a small screen, you cannot see it. But I will read the questions uh, for you. All right, don't worry. So his age his age is 29. Tu edad es 29. Yes. Okay. All right. So uh, I'm just uh, hoping that uh, once we do an assessment of his medical degree, so it will come to be uh, as what I'm seeing on the screen, it, it will come to be as a professional degree needed to practice in a licensed profession. So I'm just hoping this is an assumption. Let him know that I'm going to resume this and move forward. Mira, dice que va, va a tomar la, la, este, la asunción de que eh, tu carrera es similar o paralela a la de acá, porque sí. eh, es medicina. Le, déjame decirle que, que este, tu esposa es, este, porque eso empujaría los puntos, aunque ella sí. no venga. Ok, sí. déjame decirle. Uh, no. uh, I, I would like to let you know something, Amirjot. His yes. wife is also, is also uh, uh, re, uh, medical related. She is a nurse uh, certified, certified nurse. Okay. Keep All right. Good. 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 I'll I'll come to I'll come to the wife later on. Just just uh, have patience. A la cuestión de tu esposa. Okay. So so if he if he takes the IEL test, if he takes the English test, what do you think his language score will be? Do you have any idea? I'm asking you, Al. Myself, yes. He probably is uh, around seven, close to seven. Sure. He can get seven each. Yeah, I think I think so. Yeah, yeah, because I spoke with him regularly in English, just for his practice. So I'm I'm just assuming seven. That's okay. Good. Uh, does he? Can he speak French or he doesn't speak French? He, he no, doesn't. he doesn't speak French. No hablas de francés, verdad? No, no, no. También el nivel en el IELTS y le dije que es alrededor de siete. Siete es este cerca del medio. Okay. Okay. Keep going. Okay. And you said that he has uh, four years of experience in uh, in Mexico as a doctor, correct? Yes, correct. Now, this experience has been working for somebody or has his own business or own practice? 
working for somebody. E ese, de, 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 la experiencia que tiene son cuatro años, eh, según lo que dijiste. Y esa experiencia él pregunta que si es para eh, alguien o que si es de, este, propio del negocio. Para el gobierno. Ya, yeah. he he's federal uh, worker as a medical. Okay, he's, 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 okay. he's employed. So uh, uh, ask him uh, that does he or his wife has any brother or sister in Canada as a permanent? ¿Tiene algún, algún familiar cercano, eh, hermano o hermana, tú o tu esposa? No, no. No, they don't. Okay, so now, now the question is for wife. You said that the wife is a nurse, like a, with, a, with a degree in nursing? Tiene este diploma de, de este, eh, enfermedad, tu esposa? Sí, bueno, ella sería, ella sí es técnica. Yeah, she, she is uh, technical. But she, she does have. No, I mean, but technical means what I'm trying to understand. It does, is it like a degree or a diploma? What, what is it? Bachelor. It's, it's bachelor. Bachelor's degree, like a three-year degree or four-year degree? Uh, tres años o cuatro años? Four. Four years. It's a four-year degree. Now, now, even that degree has to be assessed by, by a credential agency in Canada, and they have to... Uh, ensure that it is uh, they have given a equivalent to a four year degree only then we can claim certain points do you understand just uh, so that he understand dice dice que este aunque sea este tres o cuatro lo que sea va a tener que buscarse la equivalencia acá en Canadá o de okay so now now also uh, ask uh, ask him and you know maybe you can tell me Just like he takes the English examination, can his wife also take an English examination? And if yes, how much how much points will she get? Okay, uh, I think she doesn't. But let me ask him for for the uh, <laughs> uh él, él pregunta que si tu esposa este sabe algo de inglés, sabe en hasta qué puntaje pudiera llegar. <laughs> no, ella no sabe nada. <laughs> no, she doesn't speak anything at all. She she cannot take the test. No, I don't think so. All right, no problem. So, uh, based on the certain information that you gave me, uh, I am showing your points to be close to 387, and uh, which is not very high score right now. I, I don't know if you can see your screen or not, but well, I'm just going. I'm just. Let, let I'm me just ask. What is I'm just. Going to, I'm just going to repeat. Okay, say, say again, please. I'm just going to repeat. Uh, Uh, the information that I have, so that uh, you are you are on the same page as I am, and so that we understand we have not made a mistake. So he's married. He is uh, he is uh, coming with the spouse. He is 29 years age. Yes. Uh, his education degree will be as a professional degree assessed, and uh, he has he has had no education in Canada. Uh, his Uh, his English test is hopefully around seven each, as you said. Correct. Yeah. Uh, correct. And he does he does not speak uh, French. Uh, he has no work experience in Canada. Uh, he has three years or more in Mexico, uh, and uh, he has no job offer. Of course, uh, he has no brother or sister through himself or his wife right. in Canada, and his wife has, has an equal equivalent of bachelor's degree uh, and uh, no experience of course for wife in, in Canada and uh, she does not speak English so are we good so far yeah everything is good let me let me translate to him just for the uh, uh, sí. Sí. Mira, dice este Amrishot que este los puntos que tienes is close to 70 you said or, or close to what no 38 you said The points uh, which you are showing based on 387, 387 for now. 387, okay. Es decir, si es si es este, eh, déjame decirle si, eh, si no viene tu esposa, si eso mejora. ¿Te parece bien? Sí, ok. Ok. Amir Jot, 
Uh, will that be better if his wife doesn't come uh, to Canada? She's not interested in coming. Really? She is not interested in coming? Why? Ask, ask him why. Dice que por qué. Pues, como ella tiene un trabajo aquí, este, mejor que el mío. It's because she has a, a very stable work. Over there is a, they call base, you know, like a, a, nobody can remove her from her job. So it's a very secure job. And she is also very comfort, uh, comfy with uh, her family. Here, here's, here's something that uh, I just wanted to add quickly that uh, I can exclude her. I can exclude her and, and then let him know how much the points will change. But just we have assumed that uh, his English is at the level of seven each. But if he can get uh, one notch higher than seven, if he can get eight, eight, eight each, if, all right, uh, then his points will jump dramatically all the way till 459. Can you just uh, let him know first? Okay, okay. Mira, dice que este puede ver cuántos puntos alcanza, si es mejor o no, eh, eh, aplicando junto con tu esposa. Pero que eh, ahorita, así como están, de los puntos que te dijo que tienes, que si alcanzas el nivel 8 del IELTS, del inglés, mm, eh, okay. es que es este leer... Eh, eh, escribir, entender y hablar. Este, si pudiera subir un poquito nada más eso, suben los puntos dramáticamente hasta 450. Ok. okay. So, as I, as I uh, said earlier also, perhaps the English language or any language, uh, English or French, uh, is uh, the, highest, the highest score, the better. That is the key to dramatically increase your points all the way very high. All right, so just let him know first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I already told you. That's All right. Last. So, okay. yeah. so now, now I have, I have uh, changed the scenario. I have excluded the wife and indicated that he's coming alone. He's not coming with the wife. Still, his points are around 405. It's not going to move much, move more than 405 uh, okay. with with the English English skill of 777 each. Can you explain that? Yeah. Mira, este uh, dice que eh, ya, ya eh, hizo el cálculo removiendo a la esposa, a tu esposa. Sí. Y eh, la, lo hizo eh, y no, no sube tanto el, el puntaje, sube a 405 cuando tienes 7 en cada uno de los cuatro este, exámenes de, de, de eh, IELTS. Ok, dice que el tomo es que si alcanzaras el 8, sería genial porque te sube dramáticamente. Ok, okay. I told him that. Okay, what, what, is he, what does he think about uh, English improvement? Can he do something about it? How does he feel? De, de mejorar el inglés. ¿Crees que puedas? Eso es. Pues sí, pues continuaría en clases. Yeah, he's taking classes. Oh, he will keep the classes and practicing with uh, English speakers like me. He is attending some meetings uh, in, in, uh, in English. All right, all right. So uh, I want to show you something else on the screen and then maybe perhaps uh, I'll show you some something dramatic, which is called a triple, triple seven, triple seven. You can see my screen. Yes, we do. All right. So I have taken off. I have taken off the spouse as a accompanying spouse right now just to see a scenario. Everything is same. The master's degree, the professional degree, but in English language, uh, IELTS, I have done uh, listening is eight and the rest is seven. Seven speaking, seven reading, seven writing, but listening is eight. And I have uh, taken off uh, the, the spouse as the spouse is not accompanying. And the score, score is looking like to be is around 469, which is a quite respectable score even though it's not very high, but it's quite a respectable. Can you explain that to him? Yeah. Mira, dice que si quita a, a, la, a tu esposa, pero él nada más sube un poquito más el, el este, de, de inglés, si sube un poquito más el leído, el, este, el hablado. Excuse me, which one did you let uh, 70 speaking? Oh, I, I changed the... Uh, 
I changed the, the English language score as because there are four four uh, yeah. parameters: speaking, listening, okay. reading, writing. So yeah. as long as long as he can get seven in speaking, reading, writing, and at least eight in listening, then then his score goes up to very high to four six nine. That's probably his. He, uh, he understands better that, than uh, anything. Just speaking is what uh, he is not very confident. Yeah, it, it's not the the key. The key in this express entry is is listening, not speaking, not reading, not writing. As long as he can get a basic seven each in uh, speaking, reading, writing, and in listening. Listening means you know they will they will give you some listening. Si entiendo, subes un poquito el nivel, ya con eso sube dramáticamente. Dice que sube a, a cuatro, 465. 465, what you told me? 469. 469? Yes. Yeah, 469. Y, y, 469, it'll be um, close to uh, many well, it is not it is not very high though, but I'll, I I will show you the last draws. Uh, last draws, uh, you know, they are they are higher than four six nine, of course, but sooner or later they will start coming down. I cannot anticipate when, but uh, four six nine is still is a very um, it's not a bad score to to go forward. And but I'll I'll show you I'll show you the uh, let me just open the screen. I'll show you yes. the. Give me one second, let me explain him. Dice que aunque se quedara el 70 eh, leído, escrito y hablado, pero con que entiendas un poco más, eh, entendieras un poco más con eso. ¿Qué tanto entiendes de la, de, de la plática que tenemos, a ver, yo te y yo? Yeah, eh, so, go ahead. Give, give me one second. Sí, es, bueno, sí, sí entiendo, pero sí, sí, sí entiendo, nada más el acento complicated yeah he understands pretty much what we are talking just the accent he's not in used to that's it okay so this is on the screen this is uh, on the screen i'm showing you the previous draws on express entry uh and uh, uh it it gives you the the dates and the point the cutoff on you see on the on right here 490 and so see yeah here? and uh, this is the CRS score of the lowest rank candidate, and uh, you can go back and you can see 490 and uh, federal skill worker. This is this is what he's applying at. So the last uh, federal skill worker was 489, and in our in our case, uh, you know we had uh, our score is coming out to be 469. So uh, we are 20 points behind, of course, but I'm not saying uh, you know, um, but 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 nonetheless, it's a good score. For him to consider getting a high English, uh, you know, marks at, at the least. Uh, but yeah. after how many months the score will touch 469 is my guess. Maybe a long time or not. But the the express entry profile is valid for 12 months, so as long as he knows it. Go ahead. Okay. Mira, dice que el el este express entry que pudieras tú hacer es válido por 12 meses. Que este eh, todavía estás eh, eh, 20 puntos abajo de, de los que ha, del más bajo que ha entrado en el último tiempo de esto que estás viendo en la pantalla sí. entonces este y, y pregunta que qué tiempo te llevará mejorar el inglés este pues bueno ahorita estoy en en un estudiando el b1 este, pero ya lo termino, ya lo termino ahorita como en mes y medio y empezaría el B2, nivel B2. ¿Y cuántos niveles son? Bueno, este, son, bueno, de, dependiendo del, por ejemplo, ese B1, B2, y de ahí sigue el C1, que es el máximo. El, ok, el, ok. Ya es el máximo. Ok, he, he's telling me uh, how... Um, what is the level that he's uh, taking in English in, in his classes? And they go by A, very elemental, and then B, and then C. You know, and he's finishing right now um, B1, ¿verdad? Uh, 
B1. And the, the B1, you're going to go to where? To B2 or, or go? B2. Okay, B2. And then B3 or, or that's it? No, C1. Okay, yeah, it's B1, B2, and then C1. And C1 is the, the highest level. So he's close to probably one and a half months to be. ¿No empezar en el mes y medio? En mes y medio empezaría el B2. Yeah. In one and a half month, he will start the B2, which is uh, the open intermediate. Yeah. Uh, look, the, my, my feeling is I'm showing on the screen uh, the federal skilled worker, the cutoff had, uh, uh, you know, uh, it had, the last draw was 489, which is 20 points more than what we can achieve. Uh, yeah. that, and the previous one was in 2020, which is I think the COVID time, uh, and there was was 415. So I, I, for two reasons, uh, I think this is a bad choice, bad program for him to move forward. Number one, because I don't think his English uh, can go to a triple seven eight. Number one, it will take a long time before his English can improve to that level. Uh, second, uh, the highest score that he can achieve is 469 or. I doubt he can touch, uh, you know, there's no other way that he can touch beside English to 489 or, you know, even higher. So express entry is an impractical solution for him right now. So tell him that. Okay. Mira, dice que eh, probablemente sea, te llevas más tiempo en alcanzar el, el nivel de inglés que se necesita para que subas al, al otro, al punto que hace falta. Entonces dice que por ahora, el, el Express Entry a través de Federal Skill Worker dice que no es el, el más viable. Ok. Yeah, so my, the, our, our conclusion of today's, uh, today's just a, a preliminary assessment is that no matter how much uh, he moves forward, it will take some time. This will not give him instant results because his English to the level of 7778, uh, it looks like it looks like it will be some time before it reaches that. Maybe, who knows, maybe a year or so. Uh, and still, uh, we do not know that uh, his points will touch to the level where he can be com confident that he'll get a draw. Uh, his draw, uh, you know, what will be the points next year? It's hard to anticipate now. So express entry is not the one right now. So let me explain explain this to him, and then I'll, I'll give him my suggestions. OK, this is exactly what I'm saying que eh, eh, quizá te lleve un año para este, eh, alcanzar el nivel que se necesita de inglés que se necesita para, este, para que alcances un mejor puntaje, porque estás con, con lo que se puso ahorita, eh, todavía te faltan 20 puntos. Entonces, sí, sí. Esa, esa, eh, eh, es buscar por esa ruta, él piensa que no es fácil ahora, que sería hasta dentro de un mes. Pero me dijo que te dijera esto para que te dé otro feedback. Ok. Ok. So, uh, so there are, there are three ways to uh, to immigrate to Canada, to come to Canada legally and find ways to explore permanent residence. One is the express entry. The second is to have a job offer. If somebody can get a job offer, which is quite difficult to get, uh, you know, sitting in Mexico. Uh, and the third way is the study visa. So, can you explain this categories and I, and I will explain in uh, in detail. Yes. Mira, dice que hay tres formas de, de venir legalmente a Canadá. Un presente, que es el que acabamos de ver, que no es tan fácil. El otro es con una, un, 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 un trabajo de Canadá. ¿Ves? También está difícil porque estás en México. El tercero sería venir. ¿Ok? ¿Cómo? So, so, venir a uh, el tercero. Ok. So, so getting, a, getting a job offer, if somebody gets a job offer, uh, it's it's quite uh, straightforward, but he's not going to get a job offer because he's a doctor. Nobody will give him a doctor or something else, uh, you know, uh, something related. So the only uh, legal option left for him is that he's a medical doctor, and if he wants to study something, he can pick a course for let's say one or two year, take admission in a college, anything that he likes to study in health studies or medical studies, and then he can apply for a study visa that. Study here for two years, and then he will get a work for three years. And that he can he can work in Canada, then accumulate uh, work experience that will 
go on to build these points eventually in the express entry. Mira, este dice que eh, es muy difícil que tenga un trabajo tú estando allá. No era que te que alguien médico, pero puedes venir a estudiar algo aquí y de esa forma eh, que puedes puedes escoger cualquier curso que el curso que tú quieres y venir a estudiar eh, un año dos años y de esta forma eh, se pueden ver muchas cosas. You said uh, once he is here studying, he will take uh, two years. And then... Well, yeah. So here, here's the here's the thing about the study program that if you if you study for one year, you need to have a study for a minimum of one year at the least. Uh, but if you study for one year, you will get a work permit only for one year. But it's, uh, you know, one year of work uh, work opportunity is very uh, less of a time for you to take advantage of the work experience to build up your express entry points and then to get a suit for it. That is why I always recommend to go for a longer program, which is two years is the best. Mira, dice que eh, puedes venir a, a tomar un curso a, eh, de un año o de dos años, pero que el problema de si pides, este, si vienes a, a estudiar algo por un año, te van a dar un permiso de trabajo, pero nada más por un año. Que no te va a preocupar mucho. Pero que si, si pides, si escoges un trabajo para estudiar, para venir a estudiar dos años, perdón, no trabajo, un, un curso para estudiar dos años, entonces te van a dar un, a, una, un permiso de trabajo para dos años. ¿Tienes alguna pregunta? Este. Eh, no, y por decir, este. En medio de todo ese tiempo, de esos cuatro años, es donde te buscaría. ¿Cómo? Dos años. Ok. En medio de ese tiempo de dos años, es que se buscaría. Este. Pero ya no sería Express Entry. No, ya no. O sea, porque es venir con un, con un este, permiso de, de estudio. Okay. Te dan un permiso de estudio, pero también te dan un permiso de trabajo al mismo tiempo. Ah, ya entendí, ya entendí, ya entendí. Ok. He didn't understand that uh, uh, he automatically gets a work, work permit if he comes to study. But yeah, I, I explained him that it's almost automatically to have a, a, a study permit then he can get a, a work permit for the same yeah. time for two yeah. years. So, so, so uh, Canada takes in uh, every year, every year close to, um, I think maybe I, if I'm not uh, mistaken, close to half a million or 600,000 students a year, approximately in that range. Every year, international students from China, from India, from US, from Africa, from Colombia, Venezuela, from everywhere. So Canada, Canada is attracting a lot of international students. Any anybody who wants to study something, they can come to Canada. the The beauty of the Canadian uh, the study visa system is that all students are encouraged and given option uh, to qualify through work experience and then you know apply for permanent immigration so most students unless they do something bad they will eventually they will eventually all of them will become pr of canada so student student option is an attractive option for anybody who wants to invest their time studying something let me tell him that yeah, dice que canada trae, atrae a más de medio millón de estudiantes no sabe la cifra exacta pero pueden ser 500 mil o 600 mil estudiantes que durante ese tiempo la mayoría, la gran mayoría, a no ser que haga algo malo, eh, como manejar borrachos o así, eh, no los dejarían, eh, no, no les darían el, la, la residencia, pero la gran mayoría tienen el chance de aplicar por la residencia y ya se quedan aquí. Mm, okay. Okay. Last year, last year, approximately, I was, uh, I was, uh, trying to get a number last year approximately 550,000 international students came to Canada from all over the world uh, studying in different colleges studying diploma or degrees or certificates or English or whatever but all of these students uh, a majority of them never go back to the home country and they find a way to either uh, you know uh, use the experience to qualify for express entry or PNP program 
or find an employer to get a work permit or something, whatever. So uh, what I'm trying to tell him uh, in my conclusion is that express entry, direct express entry is an impractical option for him. Even though he is a highly qualified medical doctor in Mexico, if he can find something to study here in Canada, let's say for ideally for two years, it is a good option for him to come here, spend some time, learn English, learn some new technology, and then eventually he can file for immigration after, uh, you know, after they say three years or four years uh, from the first date of arrival. Okay. Mira, dice que, eh, eh, como ya vieron, el expertise o, o federal skill, con todo y que seas bastante calificado como médico en México, y, y todo esto que es impráctico porque no tienes el inglés suficiente. Okay. Pero que, que escoges un, un curso, cualquiera que sea, cualquiera que sea, este, puedes venir y entonces este, ya en, eh, trabajar en ese tiempo, hacer algo durante ese tiempo, estudiar los dos años. Y al terminar los dos años, este, eh, ya puedes solicitar el, la residencia. También me dice que estaba buscando el número, y sí, son 540 mil, no recuerdo, 540 mil o 550 mil este, estudiantes que, que llegaron y que la gran mayoría ya no regresaron a su tierra, se quedaron a vivir acá. Ok. Yeah, so, so somebody like from, uh, some students, even from like uh, uh, Latin America, where English is not, uh, not uh, like the first language, uh, many students come directly to even learn English, you know, as basic thing as English, like doing an ESL program. But, you know, he can pick and choose whatever he wants to study. He has to commit to, if his long-term goal is uh, immigration to Canada, you know, spending one or two years in studying something is a good option that he can, he can do. The, the requirements of the student visa are very clear. He has to apply and get a, admission. He has to have an admission offer letter from the college wherever he's going. Uh, he has to have uh, money to pay the first year tuition fees. Of course, colleges are not free. And then he needs some money to settle in to live here. So approximately, uh, this is just an approximately tentative figure. He needs close to around 28 to $30,000 in his bank account, uh, Canadian dollars for him to proceed for study visa option if he chooses to. Okay. Um, dice, dice que esa es una de las, eh, que esa es la mejor opción porque como la otra no, no es buena, eh, sí. venir a estudiar, puedes hacer cualquier curso que sea, que muchos estudiantes latinoamericanos que en donde el inglés no es su primer idioma, vienen y, este, y estudian inglés como segundo idioma, pero que no tiene que ser ese, puedes estudiar cualquiera, pero los requisitos son muy directos, el requisito es que tengas la admisión de la escuela en donde vas a estudiar y que tengas el dinero que se necesita para estudiar. El primer año okay. de garantizar y que eso este, es algo entre 28 y 30 mil dólares. Ok. Aunque sea inglés, ¿no? ¿puedo ir a estudiar inglés? Even if he, even if he comes to uh, take ESL, Yeah, the ESL program, uh, I do not know what the fees are, but typically any college uh, wherever he's taking admission, the one-year fees is approximately around 18000 or 19000 depending on the college or university where he's going. So he has to pay the fees, so one-year tuition fees, and uh, he needs close to $10,000 as a living expenses. So more or less in the range of twenty-eight to $30,000. Yeah, um, dice que si, cualquier colegio, pues, venir a estudiar lo que quiera, puede ser inglés, pero cualquier colegio te cobra... Eh, alrededor de 18 a 20 mil dólares el, al año, ¿verdad? Okay. Y que, que eso lo tienes que pagar eh, a, 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 por adelantado. Y que para vivir en, entre 12, alrededor de 12 mil eh, dólares al año. Okay. Bueno, pues, ok. So, I, I, want to, I want to quickly add on the, what are the documents needed for the study visa for uh, Mexico, Mexican applicants for study visa. So he definitely needs uh, just I'm just going to run through my checklist. So uh, I hope he has the passport. He needs uh, uh, he needs uh, uh, the money. Money can be shown in a, like a bank statement uh, in the past four months or if he has a letter of job, job appointment letter where he's working, 
uh, he has to pay the tuition fees and uh, if he's living in a hostel residence fees, etc. Can you explain this to me and then I'll move forward? Yeah, mira, dice que este va, va a leer su lista de, de cosas que necesitas para venir a, a estudiar aquí, para obtener un permiso de estudio acá. Entonces, que necesitas este, tener un, una cuenta, ¿verdad?, en la que ha estado el dinero, ha, ha descansado el dinero allí este, eh, eh, los últimos cuatro meses, o, o, o en, su, en, en su caso un trabajo que te envíe y te lo pague, y, este, y me dijo que te diga eso y ahorita te dice lo demás. Ok. Uh, beside, beside these uh, basic documents, he also has to write uh, like a SOP, which is like statement of purpose. What is his aim of studying this? And uh, what is the benefit to him in his future career? Whatever he's studying, like English or anything else he's studying, he has to write that as well. Uh, and uh, uh, that's that's pretty much it. Now, if he wants to, uh, he can also bring... Yeah, go ahead. Mira, dice también que este, eh, necesitas tener el pasaporte, no, obviamente. Sí. Este, y que no es ningún problema tenerlo allá. Eh, eso y que necesitas este, también decir eh, qué es lo que quieres venir a estudiar y en qué te beneficia. Ok. Now, if he has, a, if he has a admission for a two-year program and he has paid the fees, he has the money, uh, he has, uh, he can financially take care of the wife and children. He can also have his wife accompany him as a student to live with him while he's a student. So, and the wife gets a, gets a open work permit to work while he's a student. Okay. Dice que mientras tú vengas a estudiar, eh, también tu esposa puede venir eh, a, acá y, y le dan un permiso también de trabajar eh, eh, abierto a ella. Okay. You said something about financial, what? The, the financial means, uh, does he have money in his bank? Because $30,000 minimum we are looking at. If he does not have this money, then there's no point in proceeding anywhere. Dice que si tú tienes $30,000, eh, eh, pues está bien, le seguimos. Pero si no, bueno, pues que todo esto. Este, no, pues no, ahorita no los tengo. Pero los puedes conseguir. Pues sí, los tendría que conseguir. Yeah. He doesn't have him right now, but he can get it. Yeah, so whenever whenever he's, okay, there's no pressure. Of, you know, whenever he's ready, that's what he's ready to. But this is the range of the budget that he's looking for. Uh, and if he wants to bring his, uh, I guess he does not want his wife to go. So then there's no point in discussing with the wife. Brian, so he's going along. That's, that's fine. So that's that's all that's all it is in study visa. Now, by the way, just one last thing about the study visa is because uh, Mexican passport holders do not need a visa to come there. Uh, they can apply for an ETA and then come as a visitor also to Mex uh, to Canada. So that's also something that he can uh, he can apply for ETA. He can come to Canada, and then uh, he can also uh, uh, visit certain colleges and see you know wherever he wants to uh, live and study. And then make a decision. He does not even have to decide from from afar. Okay, dice que como eh, eh, mexicano no tienes que tener para puedes llegar a este la visa que se pide por electrónica y venir y puedes venir a, al lugar en el que tú tengas pensado venir y este y ver cómo está la cuestión aquí. Let, let me, déjame preguntarle algo. Uh, he can come as a tourist and then change the um, the, the visa. Uh, he can come as a visitor and then change for, for a student. That is technically possible. It's not prohibited. Yes, he can. Uh, he can. He, he has to file another application. It is conversion. It's a separate application that he has to file within. But uh, you know. I, I don't I don't recommend people doing that because it just uh, sounds uh, you know because the purpose of ETA is a temporary visit. I mean, if you're coming with the aim of getting a study visa earlier, you know, the immigration does not like people you know changing their intention midway. But you know, th there's always excep exceptions. I'm not saying that it's uh, not many people do it, but uh, that's not my recommended policy. But uh, the other, other way around also in the people who have a job offer, like a lot of people who are coming on a visitor visa and visitor permit now, if they have a job offer within Canada, 
the government is allowing them to convert into work permit legally within Canada. They don't even have to return to the country. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So in case he um, he get a job offer here. That's right. That's right. So, so okay. uh, in hypothetical situation, let's say if he's here in Canada for let's say ninety days or something, whatever, an ETA, and uh, if he has a potential job offer from an employer in Canada, which has an LMIA, by the way, but eh? we need an LMIA. So, if he has an LMIA and he has a job offer, then that application can be converted. His visitor status can be converted into work status. Uh, while while he is in Canada, he does not even have to return to Mexico. But of course, uh, uh, how will you find a job offer with the LMIA? That's anybody's guess. Oh, okay, okay. And then the L LMIA is is that possible um, to get it as a doctor, or can be any any other I, job? I don't I don't think so. Uh, he cannot get a LMIA as a doctor because he is not qualified to practice as a doctor. He may have to end up working as a, you know, some kind of clerk or some kind of assistant, something in you know, a health related, something to matching his background. But, okay. uh, you know, that's that's a problem. You know, what kind of job will he get? Uh, does the job uh, his background? Does it pay well enough for him to justify, you know, all, all this all situation? So uh, it does not look it does not look good for him to be being a doctor. He works in a, some kind of labor job or some other job that does not make sense to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, the, the recommendation is to to get uh, to come as a student. Yeah, then, the, the, I, the, yeah, the best way is to come as a student, uh, spend some time uh, learning some new skill, getting some new diploma, improving your English, uh, you know, talking to different doctors. And by the way, students also get to work part time. So maybe he can find a job as an assistant or something with a, with some other doctor or a clinic or something. Uh, not as a doctor, he can work as something else in you know, a working, you know, pushing paper, administrative work or something in the doctor so that he can get to talk to certain other doctors and understand the medical system of Canada. Let, let me tell him what, what you just told me. Um, él, él dice que lo mejor que él puede sugerir es que vengas como estudiante, ¿verdad? Y que ya como estudiante este, puedas entrar a trabajar con algún doctor o algo así ya con el tiempo él te pueda este, eh, dar, dar eh, chance de quedarte. Él inclusive pudiera eh, eh, pedirte, es, es una situación muy difícil. Él no, no aconseja inclusive que vengas y cambies tu estatus. Ok. Tanto y luego eh, eh, como, este, como eh, y, y pasar a los estudiantes. Dice que técnicamente se puede, pero que en su experiencia es algo que no, eh, no quieren los, de, los agentes. Entonces... Okay. Este, pero que puedes venir, pedir tu visa, tu visa, venir y visitar y ver cómo está la cosa y, y ya luego eh, eh, aplicar ya desde México para, para un, un curso. Eh, dice que puedes tener algún otro diploma relacionado. Puede ser este, en la cuestión de las adicciones, ¿ves? Sí. Y entonces eh, eh, ya con ese, pues te, te puedes quedar. Déjame preguntarle algo que desde cuándo puedes... Eh, eh, empezar a trabajar porque eso no lo tengo claro. Uh, um, um, Amir how long will will it take him to get the uh, work permit once he get the, the study permit? So, uh, so we are talking about a different category of work permit now. So once he graduates from the program, let us assume that he has studied for two years. As soon as he graduates from the college, then he can apply. Then he can apply for the. Uh, immediately after the graduation, uh, as, as soon as he completes the requirements of the degree or diploma, he can apply for the open work permit, which is called a postgraduate work permit. And uh, typically from within Canada, it is taking two months or three months. You can check on online on the processing time. Uh, but as soon as he applies, he's on the employee status and he can start working uh, right as soon as he applies. But uh, once he is, uh, once he starts as a student, well, uh, but once he's a student, then he, he can work part time or full time actually nowadays uh, while he's a student. So he can attend classes, you know, maybe whatever classes, whatever free time he has on weekends. So he can he can work anywhere. He's, it is open work permit. Uh, but in the, while he's a, while he's, a, he's in the study program, so he's also working a while in the study program also. But after 
after the uh, after the graduation, he again gets a different work permit called postgraduate work permit. Okay, okay, okay. Mira, este dice que sí que puedes puedes este al mismo tiempo solicitar tu permiso de trabajo y con ese permiso de trabajo eh, puede ser eh, eh, de, de medio tiempo o puede ser tiempo completo, pero que sí sí puedes este eh, trabajar y estudiar siempre que puedas, ¿verdad? Siempre que, que vayas a tus clases y puedas. Ok. Y, pero lo importante, lo interesante es que después de dos años, tú ya puedes solicitar la residencia. Ok. Ok. So, that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, and uh, I hope uh, we have, I think, so study visa is a, is a only uh, practical option for him. I don't see any other uh, quick fix, uh, you know, for him uh, as of right now. If he has any questions, he can ask me the question now. Dice que hasta ahorita lo que alcanza a ver es eso, lo que te acabo de decir, ¿verdad? Que eh, la, la, lo más viable es venir como estudiante, porque no, no como este skill worker, no como eh, sí, skill worker o, o presencia, ¿verdad? Pero que sí, ahora dice que hasta aquí es su, lo que él piensa. Que si tienes alguna pregunta que hacerle. Este, no, pues yo creo que, que sí, sí estuvo muy claro todo. No, he said that everything is clear like the water. Everything is clarito? Sí. <laughs> sí, todo está clarito. Okay. All right, okay. good. So that's uh, that's all it is. I hope uh, uh, some people who are who are listening in and you know watching this, they will get get some clue based on these backgrounds. Uh, you know, uh, if your points don't go all the way till it is quite difficult actually for 480, 490 express entry right now is an attractive option. So study visa is a good option for, especially, I mean, he's only 29 years old. Imagine imagine Mexican students who are 19 or 20, maybe they're in high school and they want to learn English or something, they can come here to learn ESL uh, or anything. And I think that will be a, a great pathway for transition into immigration finally. For sure. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, well, thank you very much, Amirjad, for your time and your knowledge. All right. So I will, I will leave your, uh, I will leave you, I will leave your phone number or WhatsApp or email down below at the, at the video. So anybody yeah. who is interested to talk further regarding their own case, or we also deal in all kinds of miscellaneous uh, applications from all over the world, including express entry, uh, work visa, visitor visa, marriage uh, cases, or you know deportation, people who have been deported from uh, Canada back to their country and they want to file for inadmissibility uh, review or maybe apply for return to Canada in some category, we take a look at that as well. I have a special message for uh, Mexican nationals in US, even if you are uh, and you can translate this if even if you are a Mexican national in US with undocumented or no status, uh, as long as uh, uh, as long as you qualify, uh, then I can file your cases. But your case will, if you are legal and without any documents in in um, in US, so your application will not be processed. The application will likely be processed from the Canadian embassy in Mexico City, but. If you, if you, for example, if you are uh, if you are undocumented in U.S. and if you are qualified that if you want to study still further, you know, in Canada, uh, I can still do your case and uh, you know decide on the case by case basis. What explanation do we have to do? Just because you are undocumented or illegal in U.S., uh, that is not a reason of refusal for Canada study visa. Maybe you can translate this. Okay. Yeah. Eh, lo que está diciendo en inglés Amerjet, eh, que si tú estás escuchando este video, lo está, nos estás viendo, eh, ahí va a estar mi número de teléfono y mi correo electrónico por si tienes alguna pregunta o un caso específico. Eh, está diciendo Amerjet que si tú estás trabajando ilegalmente en Estados Unidos, no, no, esa no es una razón como para que te nieguen el permiso de venir a Canadá, estudiar y, y tener muchas posibilidades de vivir legal en Canadá. 
que no te pueden aceptar la solicitud si estás viviendo ilegalmente en Canadá. Tendrías que procesarla a través de la embajada en México. Pero eh, sí puede, eh, si sí te puedes venir a trabajar acá, perdón, venir a estudiar acá, estudiando, te dan un permiso de trabajo y, este, y entonces ya puedes estar trabajando, estudiando en Canadá con la esperanza positiva de que puedes quedarte en Canadá. Ahora sí. Ya. Ok. Ahora, right. hey, thank you. Thank you, Enrique. Muchas gracias.